Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Frost again. So hopefully you enjoyed um, doing your um, raisin experiment. So this is now going to be your challenge, okay? And your challenge is to actually design a boat. So let's move on and see what it is and why we're doing it. So for today's challenge then, we're going to be looking at both the science and engineering side of Steam Week. We're going to be asking you to design a boat that will take the maximum number of passengers Okay, and our focus is going to be on the following questions. How do boats float? And what shape boat will take the largest number of passengers? So they're the two science questions that we're going to be trying to answer as we move on through your challenge. Remember, we talked um, earlier about um, gravity and up thrust okay and they were both used in our previous experiments as the two forces we were looking at and we said that gravity was a force pulling all objects towards the ground and that up thrust was um pushing up in a liquid okay and if you want to if you've got chance to you can feel this if you try to push a light object such as a balloon down under the water okay so if you have a balloon have a go see what you think okay so you need to get your balloon try and push it into the water and see what happens okay so in this in this experiment your task is to design a boat to take the maximum number of passengers without your boat actually sinking so question the question you need to be asked asking is what shape boat will take the largest number of passengers okay, that's a question i want you to be thinking about and in order to carry out this experiment you're going to need dried or frozen peas or something similar so if you haven't got any frozen peas or a dried peas um, at home, then you could perhaps use something like cubes or Lego bricks, but you need to make sure that they're all the same size. So if you're gonna use Lego, then it needs to be all kind of um, four, four squared one or a six squared one, but they all need to be the same, okay? And you're gonna need some plastic or some blue tack, and you're also going to need possibly some foil. I'll explain in a minute why. Okay, remember that when you're planning, any kind of science experiment, whether it's at school, whether it's at home, you need to consider it being a fair test, okay? And the reason it needs to be a fair test is that you need to make sure that you're not changing more than one thing so that your results aren't um, in, a, in a mess, really. So obviously you need to make sure that you, you're using a fair test. Okay, for, for this, you need to think about what you're con gonna consider keeping the same in order to make it a fair test so what is it you're going to change and what is it you're going to keep the same okay so let's move on and see if we can carry out the experiment you're going to need um, a roll of plasticine or blue tack and you're going to roll it into a ball and you're going to pop it in the water okay so i'm not actually showing you how to do this experiment i'm just telling you what you need to to know for you to go ahead and do it yourself okay so you roll it up into a little ball and you drop it into the water okay what happens when you drop it into the water what's the first thing that happens as you drop it into the water okay and once you've observed this can you actually explain the science behind what happens to the plasticine that's what i'm asking you to do okay so can you now get the plasticine to flow in the water Okay, that's going to be the next thing that you're going to need to do. Now, how did you do this? So how have you managed to get the plasticine to float in the water? Once you have it floating, this is now your boat. So can you get the plasticine to actually take some passengers? Okay, we talked about passengers, whether it's peas, whether it's Lego, it's entirely up to you. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to actually get the plasticine to float in the water. And once you've managed to get it to float, then the plasticine or the blue tack becomes your boat, okay? And how are you gonna get the plasticine to take some passengers? So can you, what we have to think about, can you actually alter the shape so that the boat will take more passengers before it sinks, okay? So you can try now to make your boat out of your plasticine and how are you gonna make it, what shape is it gonna be in order to take the most passengers before it actually sinks?
Okay, so I'm going to let you think about that one. Okay, so if you don't have access to either plasticine or blue tack, the experiment can be done actually using silver foil. So that's why I put silver foil on your resource list. Okay, so you can actually then, if you want to, make your boats out of silver foil instead. It's entirely up to you. Okay, and if you don't have any of those, then obviously I'm sure you'll find a way of making um, a boat out of the resources that you do have at home. So, okay, so once you've gone ahead and done the experiment, I want you to think about the results. So what shape boat took the most passengers before it sank, okay? So it's vitally important, guys, that as you go through and do this experiment, that you make a record or you record what happens as it goes along, okay? So which shape boat took the most passengers and why do you think that that actually is, what is the reason behind that? What is the science behind which shape boat took the most passengers? Okay, so hopefully you'll have done your experiment and you'll have recorded what you actually saw going on. Okay, so the conclusion then is whenever you're doing a conclusion is normally you're talking about what happened in your results and why you think you got the results that you actually did. Okay, so in a conclusion, you must make sure that you are using scientific language. So you need to be thinking about the upthrust, you need to be thinking about gravity, you need to be thinking about buoyancy and about the density of um, and the shape of what you were using as your, for your boat, okay? So what was it about your boat, what was the shape about your boat that actually stopped it sinking, okay? Even though it had the most passengers, why did that particular boat not sink? Okay, so that's what you need to be thinking about. Okay, so on the, on the next um, sheet, I've given an example, a simple explanation of the results that you should have seen. Okay, so I don't want you to click on the next slide until you've actually gone ahead and done your experiment. Okay, and then you can have a look and see at the science behind. So, did you find out that the shape of the boat affects the weight of the passenger of the cargo that it actually holds? Is it Okay, so the more water that the boat displaces, the more it will float, and therefore the more weight it can take. So hopefully you would have found out that the shape of your boat makes a difference to how many passengers it can actually take before it um, sinks. So the more water that it displaces, as it goes through the water, the more water that it pushes out and displaces, the more it will actually float. Okay, so... If you have a look at my picture, okay, the ships are heavy. It's a really, really heavy object, big, big ship, okay. But because of the way they're shaped, they manage to push aside a lot of water as they go through the ocean or the sea. And that way, the water pushes back hard enough to keep them afloat so that it's an equal force. So as a boat pushes through the water, okay, the water pushes back just as hard, making that an equal force between the gravity and the up thrust, and it keeps the boat afloat. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed these science experiments. Um, maybe you could find a different um, alternative experiment to show why objects float or sink, okay? So don't forget, when you've done your experiments, okay, no matter how you recorded them, whether you've written up the experiment afterwards or whether you've recorded it as you've gone along, um, through a video, we would love to see your um, videos or your written work um, through either year five or any of the year groups um, as, as you've done them. Okay, so happy science, guys. Enjoy. Okay, and we look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care, stay safe. Thank you.